Hello there, Chris P. Williams here. I hope you're well. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be looking at sketching within Affinity Photo. And in particular, I'm going to be looking at sketching a perfect cube using vanishing points and perspective. Okay, to start, I'm just going to click on File, New, and create a new document. Okay, the first thing we need to do when working in perspective is to define a horizon line. And to do this, I'm going to use the pen tool. I'm just going to left click towards the left side of my canvas and let go with my mouse button and take it towards the right and do the same left click and you can see here I've got a red line between the two points and this is telling me that the line is actually horizontal if I were to move my cursor upwards to see the line would disappear again if I moved it downwards the line would disappear so having the line on the page tells me that's perfect so I'm just going to left click now to create that stroke I haven't actually defined anything on my canvas as yet because this is just a pen stroke. It hasn't actually drawn anything. Okay, the next stage now, I'm going to take my move tool, which is a little arrow icon on your toolbar. And you can see now the center point of my line has appeared. And I'm going to left click on the line and I'm going to drag it to the left and right. And you can see as I go to the middle, a green line appears. And this is because I've got snapping enabled. And you can enable that just by clicking the icon on the top toolbar and I'm just going to find a point where I want my horizon to lie and I think there is good as any okay this point on the left is my left vanishing point and this point on the right is my right vanishing point and this is my center line now before I go any further I'm going to draw a line on my canvas and to do this I'm just going to go to the stroke slider here which says 0pt just to the left of this black color swatch and I'm going to give it a value of 1 and I'm just going to press enter and now if I click in the black area you can see I now have a black line perfectly centered on my canvas and that's our horizon line and our starting point for this exercise okay I need to create a new layer and that's just done by clicking on this add pixel layer to the bottom right of the layers palette a little checkerboard design and I've got a new layer. I'm now going to define a radius for my work area and to do this I'm going to use the shape tool. If you left click and hold on the shape tool and then drag down to the ellipse tool and let go you've now selected the ellipse shape and although it's an ellipse I actually want a circle and to create a circle it's, it's a simple process of first of all finding my center point again sliding my cursor along my horizon line until the green center line appears telling me that I'm now perfectly centered and now if I press shift and control and then left click at the same time and drag out you can see I create a circle and now I want to make this circle big enough so that it snaps to the end point you can see there once the green line appears it's actually snapped to that node at the end of my horizon line and I can let go of my left mouse button and I've now got a, a radius encompassing my horizon line now if I press control and zero to center my page one thing you notice is that my horizon line has disappeared and the reason for this is the circle shape I just drew has actually got a white fill so to get rid of that all I need to do is click on fill and then on the top of the color palette select none for no fill and there you see it we now have our horizon line back with this radius line now this radius line and as I said earlier is defining our workspace or the area we're going to be drawing in it also assists us in selecting viewpoints now by a viewpoint I mean if I was standing here looking at my scene inwards my vanishing point to the left would be there my vanishing point to the right would be there if I was standing here looking into my scene again the vanishing points remain the same and the other thing that also remains the same is the angle so no matter where I am on this view line the angle from here to here and from here to here the angle at this point will always be 90 degrees so we've defined our viewing area now I just need to define where I'm going to be viewing from and to do this it's simply a case of selecting your pen tool clicking on a point on the viewing line where you wish to view from left click once and let go 
and then move up to the horizon line and again you can see the green line appear to tell me that that line is perfectly vertical and left click again so I've now got my distance line the next step now is to define the median points and these are the points that allow me to calculate the dimensions of the cube I'm drawing and to create those I need to create two more circles so we're going to return to our ellipse tool and placing the cursor on the leftmost viewpoint I'm going to press shift and control and left click on my mouse and drag out to create another circle and this time I'm going to pull out this circle until it meets this intersection here if I zoom in you can see there it's this pixel where all of these lines intersect so I'll just press control and zero to zoom out and you can see here where the circle intersects with the horizon line that's my first median point on the right and now I need to repeat the process now from the left so again shift control placing my cursor at the intersection point here where the circle and the horizon meet so it's shift control left mouse button and drag and again I'm just looking to get that line to intersect with the previous circles and my distance line so again if I zoom in there you can see they've all intersecting around the same point so I press control and zero or command and zero on a Mac to zoom out so by doing this I've now created my two median points left and right so just to recap then we have our distance line we have our spatial radius or our viewing line and our work area and our left viewing point and our right viewing point and our two median points so I'm now going to define the leading edge or the nearest edge of my cube and to do this I'm going to return to the pen tool and it doesn't really matter how big you make this or how small it's entirely up to you so I'm going to put the top of my cube here just left click and let go and the bottom of my cube about there so left click and let go and you can see here it's created a perfect vertical line for me because I adhere to the green magnetic tool and I'm just going to change the stroke color on this now to red so that it stands out a bit more and I'm going to increase the stroke width as well to 2 so just press 2 and enter and there you are we've seen our, our vertical line which indicates the leading edge of our cube right the next thing we need to do now is to duplicate this line we've just created by pressing Control and J or Command and J on a Mac twice so that we've got two copies I'm going to go to the first copy and I'm going to select the move tool and you can see this node has appeared at the top of that line and if I hover my mouse over it I get this little two arrow icon which tells me I can rotate now if I press shift and left click I can actually rotate in set degrees each each movement is 15 degrees so I'm interested in getting it to 90 degrees so I can now let go of my left mouse button I've got now a line at perfect 90 degree angle to the vertical now if I shift and click on this line again I'm just going to drag it down so that the ends of both lines meet in this bottom corner here so we've created a right angle here and the distance from here to here is the same now I'm going to go to the other copy and do the same so again shift right click and rotate and then shift and click on the bar and move that so that it snaps in place and there we have it we have a perfect upside down T with two perfect right angles right the next step then is to define the size and dimensions of our cube in this pseudo 3d space and to do that this is where our median points come into play for instance we know that height of our cube is defined by this leading edge but what the median points allow us to do are to calculate the actual depth of our cube in respect to this leading edge dimension and to do this we need to join the ends of this upside down letter T and I'm going to reselect my pen tool select that 
node on the left and where this circle and my horizon line intersect I'm going to left click to create another red line and I'm going to press control and click now to break that link and I'm going to repeat that process on the right side of this upside down T I'm going to left click and I'm going to go up to the left hand medium point where this circle and horizon line intersect and I'm going to left click so we've got this kind of X affair going on I'm going to select this point here which is the bottom of my cube and I'm going to control and click to break the link and then I'm going to select the rightmost vanishing point on my horizon line and return to this central T point and left click and you can see we've drawn a line now which is a perspective line from our vanishing point to the bottom of our curve I'm going to change the color of that turn that blue okay so I'm going to control and click to break the link and we're going to create a further perspective line now by selecting the end point we just created left click and let go and select this intersection point where the circle meets the horizon left click and we've created a second perspective line and we also know the top of my cube here is already defined so I can control and click anywhere to break the link so I can left click here left click on the top of my leading edge of my cube and left click on the leftmost vanishing point so you can see I've got a vanishing line going that way and a vanishing line going that way so I'll just control and zero now to zoom out now the next step is to create our further vertices and the left and right vertices of our cube are actually defined where the median line here intersects with this perspective line so if I control and click to break any previous links with my pen tool I'm now going to click at this intersection point here and I'll zoom back out and you can see now if I move my cursor to the left the green line disappears and as I move it towards the right it reappears once my vertical line is defined I'm not looking at this intersection point here as we did with the start point we're only interested now in this vertical line we're drawing and this blue perspective line so where those two meet and where the green vertical indicator appears is the point we need to create our end point for this line or for, for this vertice so there we are we've now got our second vertical line of our cube so our first one being here this red line and the second one being this blue line right now we have an additional point from which we can create a further perspective line and to do this I'm just gonna left click because my last point I created was here so I don't need to break the link I just need to left click now on this rightmost vanishing point and there we have our further perspective line and similarly on the opposite side we can do the same process where the median line and the lower perspective line meet if I zoom in here we need to control and click to break the link because we're starting afresh and I'm just going to select this point here where the two lines intersect and I'll zoom out and again we're just going to scroll up to this leading edge perspective line so we're not interested in the one we just created we're just interested in this one here at the front and you can see our green line has appeared so that we know the line is vertical and if I zoom in we can see we're at the point where those two lines meet so I'm just going to left click now to create that line so if I control and zero now to zoom out you can see we've created two vertices left and right and you probably guessed it now we can now create a further perspective line because this corner has already been defined and our vanishing point was predefined earlier so we can now left click there and you can now see we've got our cube and all that's left now is to define the base and the back and the side you cannot see so to do this we just need to control and click anywhere to break a link and I just need to select this bottom left point of my cube by left clicking and then clicking on the rightmost vanishing point you can see there we've now got the back edge of our cube space you wouldn't ordinarily be able to see this in a 3d space and we'll do the same from the other side so we'll click on 
that node there and click on the left vanishing point and there you can see now this square here is the base of our cube and I'm going to control and click to break the link and then I'm going to click on this point where the two perspective lines intersect to create a new node and again I'm going to go up to the perspective lines at the top of my cube I'm going to zoom in ensuring that my green vertical line is highlighted and where these perspective lines intersect I'm going to click and select my end node so if I zoom out you can see now we formed a perfect cube within Affinity Photo just by using a little bit of geometry and we can now create a new layer and I go using my pen tool I'm going to select a new color try this gold color and we'll just draw around this outline using the nodes we've created and I'm just going to collapse these into one layer by selecting each layer merge down so after merging all of these layers together if I just press alt and left click you can see there we've got a perfect cube so I hope you found this exercise useful if you did please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much for watching bye